I have been denied health care. As a foster child, I was given Medicaid as my health insurance. I had no choice. For 18 years, doctors could legally deny my insurance. Several doctors denied me care. We may pay for health care, but in many ways, doctors must choose us as their patients instead of us choosing them. But I am not the only one who has had this experience. In fact, there is an entire community amongst us that have been denied health care on a regular basis. They are denied care because they do not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. They are members of the transgender community. And doctors are often uncomfortable with how they dress and act, with how they perceive themselves. Because of my own past issues with healthcare, I empathize with the transgender community. I will be applying to medical school this year, and if I don't acknowledge the issues that these patients face, then I have already failed at becoming a physician. Future doctors are encouraged to consider how we can alleviate medical injustice, when in reality, some American citizens are experiencing injustice every day through the refusal of doctors to treat them. Imagine having to choose between facing discrimination at your doctor's office and avoiding health care altogether. Having to suppress your true identity in fear of being harassed in a medical setting. Even at times, having to teach your doctor how to care for you. This is a reality of many patients. In America, there are many communities that are medically underserved. Some on the premise of race, others based on socioeconomic status. Yet the transgender community is the only underserved community that hasn't received mass amounts of attention, aid, and support. Most health insurance companies exclude gender identity-related care and services. And not all states have laws that protect transgender people from discrimination. This past January, Massachusetts officially became the 16th state to treat transgender patients, citizens, as a protected class through a law that legally protects them from discrimination in public domains. But what is a public domain? Healthcare is not explicitly listed as one of these spaces. And the law only includes sexual orientation. It doesn't protect individuals from discrimination against gender identity. Doctors can also legally refuse care to certain patients if they feel morally opposed to providing certain treatments or procedures, like abortion and birth control, that conflict with their religious beliefs. And although hospitals are required to treat all patients in an emergency situation, the hospital staff itself decides what constitutes as an emergency. In other words, a transgender person could walk into an ER with a serious condition and be excluded from treatment because of their gender identity and physical appearance. Only last summer, Erin Vaught, a transgender woman, made a trip to the emergency room at Ball Memorial Hospital in central Indiana. She came in coughing up blood and was expecting treatment for a lung condition. When Vaught signed into the ER with her wife and son, she was entered into the hospital computer system as a male. When she pointed out that she had a female ID, people working at the hospital snickered at her instead of changing her gender in the computer system. 
Once in the exam room, the nurse referred to Vought as a he, she, an it, and a transvestite, after she had clearly stated how she wanted to be addressed. After a two-hour wait, a doctor told Vought that she couldn't treat her because of her transgender condition. Vought's actual condition was unrelated to her gender, and the doctor was acting unprofessionally, in fact, inhumanely, in denying her treatment. Aren't hospitals supposed to care for all patients? I guess not in Indiana. In fact, not in many states. In Dallas, Texas, a transgender woman who was anemic and needed blood transfusions was told insurance wouldn't cover the treatments because she had transsexual blood. Transsexual blood. Not type A, B, O, O negative, but TS. That ought to be making headlines soon. Another transgender woman in Minnesota was playing for a women's softball team. She broke her arm during the game. She went to the hospital, x-rays were taken, she got her arm set. Then the insurance company turned around and denied the claim. They said if she weren't transsexual, she wouldn't have been out there playing for a woman's team. And, if she, and then she wouldn't have broken her arm. Really? Well, <laughs> I'm surprised an insurance company can guarantee that the same injury wouldn't happen if she identified on a, as a male and played on a baseball team. The discrimination only worsens when transgender men and women need to receive routine sex-specific care. After legally transitioning from a male to female identity, transgender women qualify for regular mammograms, but not for prostate exams which they also still need. Similarly, transgender men need pap smears and breast examinations, but their insurance will only cover care specific to their male identity, regardless of the fact that they still have female sex organs. Many transgender people have to choose whether or not they want coverage for the female aspects of their bodies or the male aspects of their bodies. How can anybody be expected to make that kind of decision? Robert Eads, a transgender man who developed ovarian cancer, was denied treatment by over 20 doctors who did not approve of him because his female genitalia did not match his male identity. So much time elapsed that he eventually died untreated at the age of 52. For cases such as Robert's, many doctors have become the problem in patient care when they should clearly be part of the solution. An unfortunate reality is that some doctors do not treat all patients with the same level of respect and sensitivity. Hillary Clinton recently spoke about international lesbian gay, bisexual, and transgender rights at the Geneva Convention this past December. She argued that while we are each free to believe whatever we choose, we cannot do whatever we choose, not in a world where we protect the human rights of all. In medical practice, it seems practical to separate personal beliefs and prejudices from the actual job of helping others. The Hippocratic Oath reads, I will remember that there is an art to medicine as well as a science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug, but there is no warmth and sympathy where there are deaths of transgender patients. The oath continues on to say 
Above all, I must not play at God. Depending on one's beliefs, God may judge all of us for various things one day. So it doesn't seem necessary for doctor's offices to serve as a purgatory where some patients are seen and others are not. In denying certain patients health care, many doctors are playing a godlike role in which they are deciding who will be healthy and who will not. I find it appalling that, on average, only five hours of four required years of medical school are devoted to teaching future doctors how to care for the specific needs of the LGBT community. In fact, 33% of medical schools in the United States do not teach any content that is specific to transgender care. This is a clear flaw of the current medical education system. When a majority of medical schools spend minimal time training their students in the treatment of LGBT patients, the health care for an entire group of people is devalued. Most schools only offer exposure to LGBT clinical sites as an extracurricular assignment, which seems to undermine the importance of transgender patient care. Exposure to such patients is optional. And once medical students become doctors, this translates into treating transgender people as optional. Why should we deny any individual proper health care because we simply disagree with their way of life, how they identify, or what they choose to do with their bodies. This is part of everyone's individual journey to self-discovery. When I accessed the First Congregational Church's website, I noticed the phrase, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. That is the motto that doctor's offices should abide by. The cardinal ethical rule of medicine is to first do no harm. Well, isn't harm exactly what's being done to the transgender community? To end this discrimination, we must hold doctors accountable. But even more importantly, we must hold ourselves accountable. I am not a member of the LGBT community. I do not identify as being transgender. But I do care, and I hope to become a gynecologist one day and to treat transgender patients with the respect and care they deserve as human beings. I, like many of us, may never fully understand what it feels like to be denied treatment for my gender identity or sexual orientation. But I am offended by the medical maltreatment of transgender patients. And I hope that you walk away tonight uncomfortable with the fact that people within our community can't access quality health care. Their human rights are essentially denied. But human rights are just that. The rights of all humans. Are transgender people not human? They are, and their healthcare rights matter just as much as ours. Thank you.